Gulliver. Uh, rescue teams are still hard at work this morning. Yes, it's, I think, uh, minute for minute, exactly 24 hours since the um, two ballistic missiles hit this military training college. And so the rescue operations have now been going on for 24 hours. And uh, the deputy mayor of the city just gave a little briefing where he said he expected the operation to go on for at least 24 hours more. More than 10 people are still thought to be trapped under the rubble. Um, there are 271 people who are wounded, some of them in a very serious condition in intensive care. That's also according to the deputy mayor of Poltava, who stressed also that um, despite various rumours that were going around yesterday, um, they're really insisting that there was no particularly special event going on at this military telecommunications training college yesterday. It was just the normal educational process going on. Most of the victims are cadets, students at the college. Of course, it's a semi-military um, uh, site. That's why we're not allowed to film it. A lot of soldiers, as you can probably see behind me, are also engaged in the cleanup um, effort. There are certainly a lot of soldiers here on site. I was able to catch a bit of a glimpse of the rubble. I mean, the destruction is clearly, um, you know, massive. Um, they're actually talking about whether or not the building is going to be uh, able to be repaired uh, at all. Perhaps it will just have to be completely um, demolished. Um, and uh, as uh, I think you've said, it's um, the worst attack on the city of Poltava that there's been in the whole of the war. And uh, the single deadliest attack by the Russians on Ukraine in a single strike um, this year in 2024. And overnight, um, more strikes was hit. Um, two people there are reported killed, according to the city authorities. The air defences did work. Um, damage that I've seen uh, footage of is to a residential building, but that was incomplete and most people hadn't moved in yet. And so that probably um, saved a lot of, uh, you know, it might have been much worse in Lviv if it, had, if it had been a building where more people were actually living. And meanwhile, very far from where you are, Gulliver, several cabinet ministers have handed in their resignations. This is uh, an expected government shakeup looms. Why would this come at such a critical juncture in the war? That's a very good question. And I think that a lot of analysts have got a lot of different um, answers to that. Volodymyr Zelensky says he wants to give his government a new boost of energy, that he wants to change the country's inclination slightly in terms of foreign policy and other policies, but he was very vague about it in his own explanations. His critics are saying that it's more about putting people who he considers to be most loyal to him in place rather than people who he thinks are potential competitors, such as maybe Dmitry Kuleba, the foreign minister, who is reportedly on the way out. It was very clear at Zelensky's recent press conference that uh, there is uh, rivalry between him and the foreign minister. Um, the prime minister, Denis Shmigal, um, who was... Mstislav Shurma, deputy head of the presidential office, has been fired. That's something that anti-corruption activists had been clamouring for for months because he was implicated in a number of corruption scandals, indicted for conflict of interest. The judge threw that case out, but she herself was accused of corruption. He was high up on the list of people that anti-corruption campaigners wanted to see fired and that the Americans were apparently pushing for Zelensky to get rid of. But a lot of the other decisions don't seem to be going so much in the direction of getting rid of those who've been accused of corruption. Oleg Tatarov, another deputy head of the presidential office, who is um, you know, accused of all kinds of um, having his fingers in all kinds of pies in terms of corruption schemes, he is apparently staying in place. All right, Gulliver, thank you very much for reporting live for us there from Poltava.